storm clattered at the newly constructed sails in the harsh wind. It was dark that night, so that Thomas Stephen had difficulty seeing in front of his rustic face. In that wine, it drunk that night was blocking his senses, making him sweat and find himself unable to find what was spray and what was ocean around him, and, and what was what he knew. His mouth reeled upon the mission he had set himself. The royal court would not look kindly on, on him to go back on his word. He promised not to go get the, he to get the white ship to England before Henry I, and that was what he would do. It was 11.20, and, and Belflower and Normandy with none too good to sell port for in November. After the crash that night, it was written that no ship had ever brought so much misery to Britain. Someone begged to argue. The crew of white ship had insisted on sharing his good fortune in wine on the journey and already were displaying signs of drunkenness to an alarming degree. It was strange how Stephen Beloy had taken ill only an hour before the ship departed. Captain Spitz Stephen expected, especially since he retained so many of his men aboard the newly designed ship. Some might say he had almost designed events to incite them to unfold that way and to incite them to riot and debauchery. He took the notion off. No, it was impossible. An hour later, the ship rang into a, straight into a coffin and sank, the first instance of terrorist attack on English institution of governance. Many were killed that night, including William Allen, first in line to the throne. The disaster plunged Britain into anarchy for the next 30 years in the battle for succession. Adrian Elms, though, a man who had changed his name three times since birth, was only the most prominent terrorist to be remembered in 2017. It was after changing his name to Aladdin Azur. He found his career as a terrorist ending with the Westminster attacks of that year. His name was then Khaled Massoud, and as the population of Britain scour over the debauched deaths that ended that day, many were pulled of the arrests that were made. Only seven such arrests, comprising of terrorists from London and Birmingham. Compared to the loss of PC Keith Palmer, that the awful day was this was considered unacceptable. A memorial to the fallen police hero that is planned to remember the sacrifice that he made that day. The fact that the perpetrator of the Westminster attack was raised as a peace-loving sword in the rural areas of Kent highlights the awareness that anyone is capable of such deeds both today and yesterday. The further fact that our unpopular Prime Minister was whisked away with expediency, if slightly unpolished in itself, is testimony to the way in which priorities of dominance have changed from all those years ago, in 1135, when Royal Stephen was delighted to see his cousins drown in the vat of their own security. A fractured society today does retain some degree of feudalism however much he denied us. Priorities have changed, though ambition has not. The fact that Theresa May has determinedly stated that never shall we waver in the face of terrorism underlines the grasp of opportunism that is so predominantly reflected in the deaths of memories of Empress Matilda during the anarchy of the White Ship in the 10th century. The Prime Minister's insistence in recovered House of Commons that the greatest response lies not in words uh, or politicians, but in everyday actions of ordinary people. This place is grasping his desperate need for the appeal of the people that every day, particularly in light of our opposition, both in the staunch Labour Party and the determined SNP. What I have to public opinion was very similar to Edward II's revelation surrounding the unpopularity of his favourite, Piers Gaveston. The barons and nobles are liked his crowd-pleasing rhetoric less than the left today. However, many tumors Edward hosted in, his, in the early 12th century, people were still not convinced of his right to war. Neither did his counsellors, especially William Marshall. Even the peasant revolt of 1381 held less rhetoric. Wat Tyler would have had his head lobbed off at the first sign of trouble at maybe meeting him off London Bridge to discuss peace treaties. Perhaps he would have started something like, Britain is unstoppable force.
had she been had, on a, she had on a meeting with Nicola Sturgeon to trickle Article 50 on the 3rd of April 2017, many of these astoundingly outrageous modern events happened some time ago with the hope nothing can avoid repeating the mistakes of the past if it's not already too late. Prime Minister is thus using the Russian tragedy to the same effect that was tried during the attack on Ireland during Edward's reign in 1323. Only this time, she's deflecting attention from her great repeal, trying to establish a parliamentary sovereignty, a fatal move, one might consider, keeping in mind the harsh tread of the new model army through Irish mud squelched fields in 1649, and Oliver Cromwell smashed his way through vulnerable land like the Constitution of Westminster had been smashed into on that fateful day in March 2017. It was, of course, in 1605, the last notable attack of the House of Parliament was instigated. On that account, they were, on that occasion, aimed at religious reform as well. Ultimately, the gunpowder plot was also used as a tactic for manipulation of the masses, leading to the formation of bonfire night and fireworks, which we still hold today. A pleasant reminder that fervent belief is no match for callous institutionalism. Unfortunately, no one remembered the 5th of November on March the 17th or wrote a letter to the governing body declaring their intentions. Perhaps the Prime Minister had been taking lessons in spin doctoring from Guy Fawkes or Stephen Bolloy of Bolloy's. It could at least have been done in that a quieter fashion. Isn't that what modernity is for? Next time on Retrospective Rumours, I'm going a bit feminist and looking at the effects on the qualities for our genders are concerned. In particular, the beginnings of radical feminism, Eleanor of Aquitaine. Her contribution to the cause incited the start in a trend that took us to the stance today. Where did we go wrong in the 21st century? With controversies around the Theresa May's legs, it's interesting to examine how the 12th century compares with the present. Or does it? Meeting off of the fuck. What the fuck said? The fact that the puppet when Oliver Cromwell smashed through the wall. Get it, boy.